And here we are on Health Talk. I'm Peter Christian. Of course, John King right over there. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, Peter. You, got, you made it through the weekend okay, I see? I did. I still don't have any animals getting ready for my freezer, but I, I went hunting and got a good workout. Again. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, they chased you all over the hills, right? I saw lots of lakes, but no <laughs> okay, well, that's that's the way it goes. All right. And we have a special guest in the studio. We're privileged to have the Chief Medical Officer and President of Community uh, Medical Center's Physician Group, Dr. David Lechner. How good, are you, David? I'm good, thank you. Good, good morning. To see you. Is Dave okay? Dave is fine. Oh, perfect. All yeah. right. So you're a hockey player. I can call you Dave. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, tell us a little bit about Dr. Lechner, where you came from and how you came to uh, Missoula. I've been in Missoula about five years, a little over five years. I was in Helena for just under 20 years uh, with as a family practice physician there. So moved here to take over the um, role as physician, uh, president of the physician group. And then a couple of years ago, the CMO retired. So I was offered that opportunity to take on that additional duty. So that's been good. And and learning to play hockey in the world's greatest, you know, novice hockey league. And, you know, so. The greatest. The greatest. That. Now, was that <clears throat> when you came over? No, it was <laughs> not. <laughs> well, actually, there's a fair number of professionals of all walks of life there uh, that are there. And what's great about it is it's such a big, you know, hockey community. If you're an adult who wants to learn how to play hockey, there's no better community than this one to start with. So, yeah, it was, it's been good. Very cool. But you're a little sore on Monday morning, so. I'll be moving a little bit just to get my muscles moving. So I had to ask what your job even means, chief medical officer. So is that like the doctor of doctors and there's like a conflict? Yes, as a matter of fact, that's that's when part Al of it. Can't so get along with his teammates. They come to you. They come to me, and I get to adjudicate. Yes. Do, so. do, you, do you have a house on the community medical staff? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got some incredibly bright people. Yeah. I must say, I am not a, a fan of the genre of watching physician shows. So I do not. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with them, but I'm not very yeah, facile. So that's yeah. all right. That's yeah. all right. Well, today you wanted to talk about something everyone's a big fan of, the flu. The flu. It's here. It's here and it's big. So we happen to have, um, at last, you know, end of last week, a little under 30 confirmed cases in the city, which is the, the, the most in any county in the state, actually. We've had about five hospitalizations. And it's just a reminder that it's time to, if you haven't had your flu vaccine, it's never too late. It's time to get, you know, get your immunization up to speed. So we've not had any deaths this year. But last year, we ended up with about 430 hospitalizations across the state. And a little over 30 uh, deaths is what's reported from the flu last year. So it is, you know, true influenza is a dangerous disease. And it's entirely preventable with a vaccine. I would think that people would be almost surprised, maybe even shocked to hear that 30 people last year in Montana died, died from the flu. flu. Right. So, so what is about the flu? Is it that the flu exacerbates certain uh, things in other people or what? It is. So there are people that are more at risk, you know, so infants, uh, the elderly, people with diabetes, you know, heart disease, uh, asthma. If they were to contract the flu, the, the viral influenza, it sets up a series of complications that can lead to death, you know, most common of which is bacterial pneumonia. So people that will, that are at risk need to get, a, you know, immunization for sure. They may still contract the flu, but they don't necessarily, you know, progress into the complications of the flu. The other people um, that aren't necessarily in the risk groups, you know, part of the reason their immunization is to help make sure that they don't catch it and then inadvertently spread it to somebody that is at risk. So... Um, we know that the the elderly folks over the age of 65, um, which I see lots of skating on the hockey rink, by the way, um, <coughs> that uh, not necessarily playing hockey, but just skating. No, no, they're playing hockey. Oh, cool. Are you kidding? Right. Yeah, my hero is a gentleman with two knee replacements in '66. So wow. absolutely. Um, but no, they uh, um, the immunizations are not as effective. They're not ineffective. So don't take that by you know, don't get your shot. They're not as effective as they are in folks that are younger. So it's really important to get, you know, everybody else immunized around them so that they don't inadvertently contract it that way as well. So, so really, anybody over the age of six months should get a flu vaccine. It's that simple. When we're talking about influenza, it's actually a pretty big spectrum of different types of influenza, right? I mean, I've heard there's A, there's B, yep. there's a piggy type, there's a birdie type, there's probably types for every other animal out there. I don't right. know. It's like the Chinese Zodiac. Right. But I guess my question is, when, when we're talking about this and we're talking about the flu shot, my understanding is that the flu shot is just an attempt to make sure that we get the flu. 
that strain that's going to be common in Montana that year, or wherever in the United States. In the United States, correct. And that when they make this batch, they just kind of kind of pick what they think is most likely to spring up. That's did, correct. Did did they get the guess right this year? You know, I don't know that we know. There's not been enough serotypes identified to to know where that's at. I mean, it's it's one that you get a almost a Monday morning quarterback look back, say, well, we were, you know, did better this year than we did last year. But I, I don't know that I know that yet. You're like, oh, there, no, we didn't guess it right. Trump won. <laughs> yeah. How, how did we do last year? Um, not bad. You know, it still wasn't as, as, as good. They're always refining, um, but not bad. You know, last year is substantially better than 20 years ago. So, and there's some, you know, the science behind it is, you know, is above my, above my pay grade. I, you know, I've got a, a rudimentary, understanding of how the CDC and, you know, they predict based on the influenza patterns that are in the Southeast Asia, Japan, you know, that area is that as this spreads globally, they're able to predict, make a best guess, you know, based on the stereotypes of whichever influenza A or B is going to be more prevalent. So now, d- does the flu virus have anything to do with the Zika virus or are those two totally very different separate things? different? Yes. Yeah, very okay. separate. So flu virus is not, you know, transmitted via mosquitoes like the Zika is. So I know that uh, speaking with the uh, Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services earlier on this year, that both a, a type A and a type B strain have been found in Montana. Mm-hmm. Um, one was A is much more common though. One was the H1N1, I believe, mm-hmm. or one of the stereotypes of H1, you know, H1N3 or something along those lines. So, they got like right. 14 subcategories. They do, right, right, right. <laughs> of course, got to keep it <clears throat> right. complicated. <clears throat> Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> so, so how how is well? By the way, we're visiting with Dr. David Lechner. He's the president of the Community Medical Center's physician group, chief medical officer. How how is a flu vaccine formulated? How is it put together? You know, I'm not. Sh- you know, it's it's initially incubated. You know, I think in eggs. So it's the one major contraindication for people with a flu vaccine is if they have an allergy, true allergy to eggs, that they can't get a flu shot. Um, there are other ways to try and get immunizations, you know, but, um, but they can't get a flu vaccine. So, um, some of the strains. So, you know, honestly, I don't have a good understanding of how it's actually mass produced. I do know that there's a number of companies that make them worldwide. You know, in years past, we had, uh, some difficulties getting from specific companies, uh, that's not an issue this year. There's plenty of vaccine. There's good distribution. And the CDC actually does not have a recommendation of one vaccine over the other, other than you don't get the nasal vaccine this year. They're not, they're not uh, uh, you know, um, accepting that that's going to be helpful this year. So it's tough for the company that makes the nasal mist. But Yeah, um, yeah. Well, you know. we're, we're up against our first break. All four of our lines are open. If you have a, have a question for Dr. Lechner, 721-1290 is our number. If you are a little bit concerned, uh, should I get the vaccine? I'm a little bit nervous about getting a flu. Maybe I've never had one before. I don't know what to expect. What's going to happen to me if I get a flu shot? What happens if I get sick? Things like that. So 721-1290 is our number, 1-800-568-5309. We're coming right back. And we're back. This is Health Talk, and I'm Peter Christian, along with John King. Dr. David Lechner joining us here uh, on Health Talk, president of Community Medical Center's physician group and chief medical officer there. Go ahead, John. Well, I was going to answer the question, and and, uh, Dr. Lechner was right on line with the whole eggs, uh, chicken eggs. But this is from the CDC. This is how they explain the process of making the flu vaccine. The most common way that flu vaccines are made is using an egg-based manufacturing process that has been used for more than 70 years. Egg-based vaccine manufacturing is used to make both inactivated vaccines, uh, called the flu shot, and live attenuated vaccines, usually called the nasal spray. The egg-based production process begins with the CDC, or another laboratory equivalent, uh, providing private sector manufacturers with candidate vaccine viruses, or CVVs, grown in eggs per current FDA regulatory requirements. These CVVs are then injected into fertilized hen's eggs and incubated for several days to allow the viruses to replicate. The virus containing fluid is then harvested from the eggs. I I don't know if they go on to be those little Russian ornamental eggs or not (laughs) at that point. Or or they end up at the local cafe. (laughs) For flu shots, the influenza virus for the vaccine are then inactivated or killed and virus antigen is then purified. The manufacturing process continues with purification and testing. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, um, while we were on the break, a guy called in. He's a microbiologist. He says he works for a company who just got FDA approval not too long ago to do a similar process with insect eggs. 
so that they can get around the problem people have with being allergic to eggs. As long as, egg not, as long as they're not mosquitoes, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we are good. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have calls, so let's get right to them here. Uh, Dean is up first. Dean, you're on with Dr. David Lechner. Hi. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, my question was, uh, I uh, it's been like about two and a half months ago I had uh, my thyroid removed because of cancer, but... Anyway, I had a flu shot done, like about, uh, I guess it's probably been like two and a half weeks ago, and I I got like a mild case, I think, of what felt like flu, you know, with a little bit of chills and fever, and is that kind of common? It only lasted a couple days. I mean, it wasn't bad. Dean, I think you're right on. It's the most common side effect is a little redness or soreness at the site. Then there are a percentage of people that actually will get the exactly what you described, kind of low grade fever, a little chills, a little achy. It's not the true, it's not flu per se, because you can't transmit flu with the vaccine because it's an inactivated virus that you get. But but that side effect is very is uh, very common. I think you're exactly right. Now, let me, do- doctor, is is the fact that he got those symptoms mean that his body is producing, you know, uh, uh, it, uh, it, it at least reacted to it? That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So <clears throat> it may be, it's it maybe a good also, sign. Oh, go ahead. Oh, D. if you don't mind, I also have to say that I'm also a guy, and you know. And I'm like a major whiner, and <laughs> when I do get the, when I have had the flu, I'm you're talking like the right crowd for <laughs> like a week and a half or a month or whatever. So right, yeah. Oh, oh, woe is us, right, Dean? That's right. Uh, thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks, Dean. <laughs> thanks for the call. I'm glad Thank you're you. feeling better. So, so uh, to piggyback on that, we've got a uh, a post on our Facebook page, which I'll read to you and get your response for. Uh, Tim says, Doctor Lechner, I got a mandatory flu shot four years ago. Um, I believe for being in the military. I'm not 100% sure on the mandatory reason for that. But he says he went through a horrible, painful paralysis. The flu shot is not safe or effective, he says. Uh, 1,400 people get transverse myelitis yeah, nationwide. Guillain, per- Guillain Bray. Mm-hmm. And can you explain what, what's going on there with the... So there are about? percentage of people, as he correctly identified, that, so it's, that can get Guillain Bray. So not terribly common, not common enough that even you know the CDC or the physicians are recommended against using the, uh, the flu vaccine. It's an unfortunate consequence that he experienced. Interesting enough, if you look on the CDC website, people that have had Guillain Bray aren't necessarily um, not aren't necessarily contraindicated from getting a second flu vaccine from the CDC's recommendations. So they can talk about it with their doctor. I would think somebody that's been through something as horrific as what he went through are likely never to get another vaccine, but it's not common. What what is Guillain Bray? It sounds like a type of cheese to me. I have no idea. Like, <clears throat> is it is it paralysis? Is it, it is. It's 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 a temporary paralysis that um, you know as a as a consequence of having the vaccination. Okay. So. And what causes it? Is it just a, your body's immune reaction? Response, yeah, pre- oh. likely the immune response it creates as it attacks the, you know, that area of the the spinal of the central nervous system that creates that musculoskeletal uh, paralysis or weakness. Okay. So. All right. Let's get uh, back to the phone. George, you're on with Doctor Lechner. Hi. Hello. Hi, George. You're on. Go ahead, please. Oh yeah. Um, well, good morning. Uh, what it is, I have COPD. And I've got, and I normally get my shot, and I haven't got it yet. But I'm also like catching a small cold. Should I go ahead and have it done now, or wait till the cold's over with? No, you should. You know, George, you should do it sooner than later. So, if you've got Excuse a, me, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You should do it sooner than later. Um, <clears throat> the, it takes about two weeks. Once you get your immunization, it's about two weeks before you're going to uh, have full immunity with that. So. You know, waiting for the cold to pass, you know, it's not a contraindication. If you were having higher fever, something along those lines, then, you know, it may be worth waiting. But that's a may, it's not a must. So, but if you got a small cold, you think now, I think it's still go ahead and get your immunization. Now, with people like like George that have COPD and other respiratory uh, uh, illnesses, is it important for them to get a flu shot early? Yes, it is. Absolutely. So when it starts, when it first comes out, there's no... People are always worried about, did you get your shot too soon? And that's not the case. Um, it lasts, it's going to last through the season. But, you know, George is, you know, one of the high risk groups that you worry about complications from the flu. So, yep, he should. All right, George, uh, go go get your flu shot, buddy. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, George. Appreciate it. Go ahead, John. 
Well, I was going to ask you, I, I heard that there's like a flu season, like it comes around, it kind of hits really hard during a certain part of the year that we happen to be in right now. I was wondering if you could kind of explain why that is. It's typically it's, it's, you know, later winter than it is. I mean, so getting this, this big group of folks in Missoula this early, you know, November or so, um, is a little unusual, you know, usually it's February, March, I'm sorry, January, February timeframe for that. So, but you know, why it hits, you know, one year earlier than others, you know, I don't have a good explanation for that. Is it so, a Christmas phenomenon? We all come tra- together and give each other diseases. Travel helps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the gift that keeps on the giving. The gift that keeps on giving, you know, so, sure, which sure is, like, which yeah. is an important piece as you do start traveling, thinking more about how are you going to prevent it? So flu vaccine two weeks before you travel is not a bad idea. Lots of hand washing, critically important. You know, that's the biggest transmission risk is actually off of, you know, infected surfaces. So, and if people, you know, like George, if he's got a slight cold um, at this point, you might even think about, you know, avoiding being around other folks until it declares which one direction or the other. So. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Come right back. 721-1290 is our number. Dr. David Lechner joining us. All of our lines are open. If you have a question, especially about the flu, uh, give us a call, and we'd love to hear from you. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back on Talk Back. I should say Health Talk. Talk Back coming up in just a moment. Dr. David Lechner joining us here in the studio. He is the Chief Medical Officer and President of Community uh, Medical Center's Physician Group. Now, uh, we've got, we've been talking about flu, so perhaps one of the best things we can do as we uh, transition to the fact that you're not going to be with us too terribly much longer, uh, we need to find out how we can avoid getting this. I mean, do, do we need to closet ourselves away until March, or what, what do we do? No, flu vaccine for anybody over the age of six months um, is important. Uh, and then, you know, just being very careful when you're out in public. Never, you know, never pass up an opportunity to wash your hands, um, particularly. So if people are sick or if you're feeling sick, like you've got true flu, um, getting seen earlier because uh, you can treat it. If uh, it's caught within the first 48 hours of symptom onset, there are some effective antiviral therapies for that. Um, and if you're after that point, then, you know, then you can cloister yourself away so you're not getting other people affected. So, so now, is it also important self-imposed, to, yeah. to keep your hands away from your face? As best like you that. can, but it's so yeah. inadvertent. Yeah, that, I know. Yeah. Right. You wipe your nose, you wipe your nose, wipe your eye. I have whatever. a teenage son. I understand what lots of stuff gets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that, 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 that's a world in itself. It uh, is, so, yeah. So let, let, let's get back to the phones. Grab those headphones. Let's get Richard on the line. Richard, you're on with Dr. Lechner. Hi. Yes, Dr. Le- Lechner, what is a virus pneumonia? Viral pneumonia? Yeah. So it's in will specifically settle into the lungs themselves, much like a bacterial pneumonia that will light into one lobe of the lungs. Viral pneumonia doesn't necessarily become what's called lobar, where it segments into the lung, but will affect a broader portion of the lung tissue that what's called the lung parenchyma itself. Um, it's, it can also be, you know, fatal. It's difficult to treat. Um, you know, there's the antivirals, you know, may or may not be as effective as antibacterials for a bacterial pneumonia. Um, but it's uh, also a very serious illness as well. Well, that start with a um, can that start with a uh, uh, with a high temperature, and then uh, if you stay in bed for for four days and uh, eat it, have chicken soup and other things like that, <laughs> and then when the temperature drops, you can uh, you can consider yourself cured. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's better. Yeah, I'm not right. a, I'm not a huge fan of bed rest myself, but. <clears throat> I like I'm lots a, of I'm fluids. I'm a big fan of chicken soup, though. I, I love like the chicken soup. <laughs> well, that that bed rest was what I took in uh, the first week of January in 1951. I had just started a paper route at the age of 12, and uh, wow. and uh, I didn't have a uh, the uh, enough clothes on because I just wasn't used to it. the winter. Was bad. It was it was the same winter they were having in Korea. Wow. Huh. Wow. All right. Well, Richard, we got to run, but thanks for the call, sir. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. All right. So we have exactly one minute left, uh, Doctor Lechner. So uh, give us uh, give us some contact information. If we uh, we can pretty much get a flu shot anywhere, right? I mean, you can. Yep. You can. You know, most most physician offices will have a flu vaccine. Most of the pharmacies these days offer them as well. Um, it's absolutely worth you know going either direction. Not terribly expensive. Most insurance plans are covering them, right? Um, because of you know the the fact that it does prevent you know a bigger problem down the road. So it's you know, cost effective. As, as most as most even though most people aren't terrible big fans of the Affordable Care Act, one of the things it does do is it pays for flu shots. It right? does. Immunizations yeah. are are an important you know aspect for public health. So. 
So how do we get hold of your of, of Community Medical Center? Just give us a call, the main switchboard? Main switchboard would be fine. Got it. Yep. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you. Nice Thank you. being I back. I believe it's seven two eight forty one hundred. I think so. that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I've called there many times. All yeah. right. You guys have a great day, and we'll be back with uh, with Talk Back here Thank you in so just, much. just a moment.